LNG TV, the official media partner for the World LNG Summit and Awards 2021. Well, I am delighted to be joined now by Julie Mayo from BakerBots here at the World LNG Summit and Awards. Julie, great to have you here on LNG TV. Um, now, 2021 has been a, a big year for you, both for the industry, but also you, your move to BakerBots was, what, the back end of 2020. But how do you reflect on the past year? You know, it's, um, it's actually been a great year, I think, and obviously for me personally, but also it's been a joy to see the industry come back. You know, 2020 was such a challenging year for most people, personally and also professionally in the industry. And so seeing everything start to come back in 2021, seeing positivity in the industry, seeing progress, seeing evolution and adaptation has really been the best part of 2021 to me. And you're an advisor to many of the organizations here at World LNG Summit. What are the big questions that they want answered um, when you're looking forward to the next 12 months? You know, I think really big picture, it's decarbonization. And there are a lot of different aspects to that, but it's really, I mean, things like low carbon LNG, things like CCUS and hydrogen, I mean, those are all buzzwords that we hear every single day, but it's also thinking about the nuances of that. You know, how, how are we gonna do it? What are the technologies and the technological innovations that we need to see to make it a reality? How much is it gonna cost? And who's gonna pay for it? Um, you know, we've got the Build Back Better Act coming in the US, and that's got a lot of tax credits and incentives. It'll be interesting to see whether all of that holds and actually becomes law. Um, and, you know, thinking about things like how do we make people trust decarbonization, you know, issues of transparency and um, kind of conformity, having, having a system that everybody believes in and can trust. I think you have to have all of those things to really make decarbonization work. And so I think that is a big picture question that everyone is thinking about right now. Because there's so much scrutiny on the industry at the moment and trust is a big, big issue. And we've talked about that with a number of guests. And actually, I spoke to your colleague, um, Stephen Miles, about this. With the fallout from COP26, next year, do you feel that policy or prices, which one's going to have the biggest impact when it, on the LNG market? You know, it's an interesting question. And ultimately, everybody in the LNG industry is in a business. We're here to make money. Um, and so pricing is always going to be important. The commercial aspect of a project is always critical. But policy has a role to play, too. And we've obviously seen policy drive commercial activity. And, and for example, US LNG export projects. A determination about whether to add on a CCUS component or to also have a hydrogen component will be driven by a combination of both policy and um, commercial impact. And I think both of them have to make sense. And when we talked in March on LNG TV, um, financing was a major topic. Do you still feel that is a hurdle when it comes to new supply projects for next year? You know, I'm, I remain optimistic that the U.S. LNG industry might have a few more FIDs in it. Um, and I do think that the, the market continues to shift a little bit uh, towards shorter term contracts. And that's something that, as we discussed in March, I think the financing markets haven't really kept up with that. There's still a little bit more of a traditional view of how to finance some of these projects, and innovation hasn't really come to that space quite so much yet. Now, there are templates for what's happening in the LNG industry and other sectors of the energy industry, I think, that can be applied. But it's certainly, I think there's more evolution to be had there. Um, I think perhaps one of the bigger issues thinking about project development globally is actually the change in policy of a lot of the multilaterals and DFCs moving away from financing fossil fuel projects. I think that's going to be, um, at least in the near term, probably a bigger hurdle. Now, you work a lot with uh, US LNG companies. Um, 
where uh, carbon capture solutions, they're, they're very much in focus. Uh, do you feel that moving forward that they perhaps will um, become a must for LNG liquefaction projects or, um, again, will price ultimately dictate what happens? Yeah, you know, as I was saying, I think that ultimately it's going to be a balancing. I don't think it's a must at this point. I would not be surprised if there are other US LNG projects in addition to those that have already publicly announced CCUS projects that add on a CCUS component, but I think it has to make commercial sense at the end of the day. So I think it will be a balance there. Now let's talk about the ExxonMobil uh, Power Play Awards because you were one of the inaugural winners. Uh, we, we were in Dubai, or LNG TV were very much in Dubai for the last um, awards in September. Um, how do you feel um, that the awards have um, grown in stature within the industry over the, over the last few years? I think they've done an amazing job. I was so impressed. I mean, PowerPlay really just keeps getting better and better, doesn't, doesn't it? I am um, the the quality of the finalists this year and their stories are just absolutely amazing. And I think um, it's really important to shine a light on people that are doing wonderful things in the industry. And there are clearly so many people <laughs> that are actively involved in the LNG industry and that are focused on improving you know, diversity and uh, equality and inclusion. And um, I just, I love being involved with the power play because I think it's so uplifting. It's, it's a really positive impact on the industry, I think. It certainly is. And do you have any advice for this year's winners as such in terms of playing it forwards, how they can help inspire the next generation? You know, it's interesting because I remember after I won the Power Play Award feeling like this is a really big deal. And I felt like I had a lot of pressure, self-imposed pressure, to go and pay it forward in a really big, spectacular way. But I struggled a little bit because I didn't know what that would look like. And then I realized that maybe that actually wasn't what I needed to do. And I needed to refocus that energy and remember that little things can make a really big difference. You know, those things that we kind of do every day and maybe we don't really even think about it. And, you know, I don't know if you've ever had somebody that will come back to you years later and say, do you remember when? Um, and I actually just recently had this experience. I, I had an associate that I worked with right when I joined Baker Bonds. And um, they were lovely and wonderful and met one time over video and worked together just a handful of times. But the work was fantastic and just a wonderful person. And unfortunately, as sometimes lawyers do, um, this particular lawyer decided to leave the law firm. And when I went into my office for the first time after they'd left, I found a thank you note. And I was blown away that someone would think after such, in my mind, limited interaction of just me doing my job, you know, me, me expressing gratitude to someone for, you know, being responsive and being thoughtful and, and being good at what they were doing, um, merited that. And it, it just, it was such a great reminder that the little things really can mean a lot. And I think whatever you give, you get back tenfold. And that's certainly been my experience with power play. Um, and so I would really encourage all of the winners to, you know, to keep doing what you're doing. I, I don't know that I can tell them. I'm sure they've all already thought about how to do all of this better than I have. Um, but, you know, keep doing what you're doing and, and focusing on the small things and and giving to the power play will absolutely um, be rewarding. So. To, to create a community, almost looking after each other and, yeah. and, and building a sort of bond between. Be kind, be kind. right? Yeah. I we mean, all I need think, to do that. Our I New think Year's that is resolution. The basic thing. So that's your personal New Year's resolution for it 2022. Is, it is. Um, how do you feel that the industry is going to be in 2022? What are your <laughs> predictions with that, or your hopes as well? Um, you know what I'm hoping for, and I'm going to deal um, from Representative John Lewis, who is a U.S. civil rights icon and um, subsequently a congressman. And uh, before he passed away, he had coined this phrase, good trouble. And so I'm going to steal that a little bit and say, I'm really hoping for good change 
because I think over the past year, almost two years now, we've been subjected to a lot of change. But a lot of it has been negative change or unwanted change or things that we felt like we couldn't control. And what I see happening in the industry now is good change. And it's innovation and it's evolution of commercial models and project structures and um, rethinking how we think about the product that is LNG. And so I think all of those things are very exciting and very positive and I have every hope that 2022 will just bring more of that. Good change all round and being kind. Thank you so much, Julie Moe, for joining us here on LNG TV.